I'm just pushing the pin through a little bit more here. Okay. All right, so now we're going to turn it around. Go back to the pin tool off. We'll put it in that one. And you're just going to give it half a turn. See, now it's now it flexes. And now the chain is installed. Super easy. Cool. It's starting to look like a bike you can ride, right? Okay, so we've got the derailers installed. We've got the chain installed. Uh, at this point, you're going to want to check the high end limiting screw because it's really easy to do. Just go ahead and look at it. What you're looking for is the wheels of the derailleur in line with the, the high end cog of the bike. And it looks like they're pretty good. And then likewise, you can hear it rubbing on the front. So we'll go ahead and fix the limiting screws. These work independently from the cable, so we can do this now. Go ahead and take care of it. So I'm going to loosen up the low end limiting screw. So that should be fine. Okay, and now we don't have any brakes. Let me get to that. Uh, I'm going to do the rear derailleur first, and then the rear brake, so that if we run out of time, I've done one derailleur and one brake, and I'll do the rest of it. Okay. Cable and the bike. This is probably the one that everybody wants to know how to do because if you can cable the bike, then you can also adjust your derailleurs and shifting and brakes and all of that stuff. So these are shifter cables. They have smaller heads and they're narrower gauge. These are brake cables, larger heads and thicker gauge. The reason for that is that your brakes are actually pulling really hard. And this has to stop you, so they can't be braking. Shifter cable, all you're doing is pulling against a spring, and that's it. So they don't have to be really strong. So they make them smaller, so they're lighter, so your bike's lighter. Uh, then you've also got housing. There's shifter housing and brake housing. And the difference is, so this is, this is brake housing, and you can see it's like a wound metal like really strong kind of metal tube that goes down in there. And the reason for that is that when you pull on the cable, the shifter or the cable, uh, the brake housing has to hold up to that pressure. Because really it's the housing that allows you to pull on the cable and have the brakes do something. And you'll see what I mean by that here in a minute. Shifter housing is lighter and also not as strong as I can find this is poking out. Shifter housing is made up of a bunch of small cables running the length of the, of the housing. Let's see if I can find one here. It's a perfect example. This is shifter housing. You see how that's formed? So if you use that for brakes, this is just gonna fail and, and slide open and fray. You can use brake housing for shifters, but you never ever want to use shifter housing for brakes. It's okay for it to be too strong. It's not okay for it to be not strong enough. Now technically this probably would hold up for a little while. Not a bike pull. Huh? Not a bike pull. Not a bike pull. A bike pull would destroy that. So, a lot of companies, sometimes you just have to look at it, a lot of companies do this kind of thing where the shifter housing has its black ends and the brake housing has the silver ends. Those are called ferrules, housing ferrules. And they just kind of hold together the end of the housing. And this kind of is just put the puzzle together sort of thing. So that's not going to be long enough. Let's, let's try this one. 
Cable stop. Cable stop. That's probably not going to be long enough. Let's try this. You just want it to clearly. Um, mm -hmm. stops and basically what you're doing is for now I'm uh, just kind of putting the puzzle together and figuring out how the oops, sorry, how the cables are going to go together. This bike also, you kind of, every bike's different. A lot of bikes are way, way different in terms of how the, the housing is run. Um, this one looks like. This one right here. Generally, you're going to have some. Right is rear. Right side, rear. Uh, probably going to have to find another piece for the front. Because that clearly is not going to be long enough. And then also, this housing is kind of So that's kind of how the housing's going to run, and there's going to be another one that comes up to here as well. Uh, as far as how the cable itself goes in, a lot of shifters are different. There's uh, down tube shifters, which would go like here, and you just turn it by moving that. Those are friction shifters. Uh, there are the lovely, lovely, very undesirable grip shifts. Man, these are awesome. I break them every time I try to put a new cable in. I hate these things. They're so weird and difficult to get cables into. These are called index shifters, or like rapid fire shifters because you're pushing buttons. There's clicking. What's going on with index shifters is you're going to move them, you're going you're gonna to click them, and uh, it's going to move it a set amount each click. And that set amount is going to correspond to the distance between the two different cogs, which is going to shift it. So with these index shifters, it's really important to make sure you get the cable tension correct. With friction shifters, if the cable tension is not right, you can just move it more. But with these, you can't just move it more. They're indexed. You can only move them so far. But if your limiting screws are set right and the cable tension is correct, then it will just work. So all I did with there was unscrew the cap uh, or the, the, the shifter cover using just two of those screws. Now how these sit Whenever you install a cable, you want it to be in the most relaxed position. Uh, so that's going to be this one. And if you come up here, you might have to come up here to see this. But if you come up, you can see the, uh, the seat stop, which is just a little a cable seat, rather. Yeah, that should just go right through there. 
There we go. It's just a little hole. And if you if you're interested, you can come up here and look. If not, it's fine. It's just this little hole right there. It's like threading a needle in one of those things. You're gonna pull it through, and that is gonna sit in the seat right down there. So that's the seat. We go through this. Yeah. Then, and then it's just a matter of feeding it through. Yeah. So. This through. I'm going to take the housing out to feed it through because if you don't, you're going to press against the, uh, the housing ends and you're going to fray the cable. Do you usually want to grease the housing first or does it doesn't really matter? If you grease it, uh, you want to use a really, really extremely thin lubricant and you want to blow air through it afterwards because the lubricant will. Uh, pick up grit and nasty from the road, which will eventually clog the system. So, you can lubricate. I usually do on my personal bikes, but I'm also, my personal bikes live in my house and get clean regularly. If you're not going to clean your bike regularly and it doesn't live inside, I would not be able to. Just feed it through. Uh, there's a trick, so these, these are spun a particular way, and if you can't get it started, you can twist it, and then you can push on it a little harder, and it won't fray, because you're going in the direction that the cable is wrapped. What do you do with the phrase? The phrase? Uh, hope that you have enough cable to cut the fray off. I don't even know if this cable is long this is a used table. Try to recycle everything. Okay, so you got the idea. We've got this cable going. I'm going to go ahead and screw this back on so that I don't forget to do it later or so I don't lose anything. A lot of this stuff is just like looking at it and seeing how it goes. You know, and I, I understand that when you have no idea how any of this stuff works, it's like, oh my god, where do we start? But now you've seen somebody take a part shifter and you've seen somebody run the housing and the cable through stuff. So, if you're ever in a position where you need to do that, you might be like, I remember that it's really simple. So I'm just going to dive in and try it. See what happens. And if I break it, I'll just bring my bike to Wildcat Wheels and they will fix it for me for free and they'll show me what I did wrong. I would rather you guys bring in your broken bikes because you tried to fix them and failed than bring them in before you try to fix them yourself. So, cable clamp, nut and bolt. That's all it is. Really, that's all a bike is, is nuts and bolts. The whole thing is nuts and bolts. Uh, derailleur has a cable and a spring in there, too, but the spring you never mess with because it's in the derailleur. And the cable, you adjust the tension with the cable clamp, which is a nut and a bolt. So, I'm going to put that in here. I like to just pull it as hard as I can without moving the derailleur. You don't want to pry against the derailleur because if you pry against the derailleur, move the derailleur, and then you clamp it down, the derailleur cannot relax beyond that move position. You never want to pry against derailleurs. So just pull it so it's pretty taut, and then get that in. 